Hello, this is David Cavuto, Product Manager with Cribble Search. This is part one in a four-part video blog series where we'll be walking through setting up a data loop using Cribble Search and Cribble Stream to create a temporary storage location in AWS S3 for search results, much like a materialized view in a relational database. This technique is useful for accelerating many types of data access, including facilitating investigation of specific incidents as well as long-term trend analysis. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to set up the data lake destination in Cribble Stream to send data to an S3 location optimally formatted for Cribble Search. Feel free to follow along in your own Cribble Cloud instance. This demonstration requires Cribble Cloud 4.1.1 or later. Here we start out in Cribble Cloud, and we'll go into Stream and open that in a new tab. We'll also click on Search and open it in a new tab. Now we have a Stream tab and a Search tab. By the way, in the background, we see some AWS management consoles. We'll take a look at those in a minute. Heading back into Stream, we can look into the default worker group and then specifically find our destination, which is the Data Lake Amazon S3 destination. If we click on that, we'll see that none currently exist. So we'll create a new one and walk you through the steps on how to create that destination. Click on Add Destination, and you'll get a modal for that new destination. First, we'll see we need to give it an ID, and then point it at a bucket name in AWS that we'll use as our storage location, and that's where the AWS console will come into play. So we'll give it a name, first of all. We'll call it Data Lake, appended by today's date, 2023-0414. Then we'll give it a bucket name that we'll create. Let's call that bucket Data Lake Bucket 2023-0414. That bucket doesn't exist at the moment, but we will create it. So we'll go up here and create that bucket in S3. We'll click on Create Bucket. I'll call it Data Lake Bucket 2023-0414. We'll leave it in US East 1. We'll leave everything else as default. And then we'll click on Create Bucket. Great. Now that bucket exists. If we scroll down here, we will see that Data Lake Bucket 2023-0414. Next, what we have to do is create an AWS role so that we can have access to that bucket in both Cribble Stream and Cribble Search. Going back to the Data Lake destination in the Stream window, we'll click on Assume Role, enable it for S3, and then we'll need to create two policies in S3 to allow your stream tenant running in Cribble Cloud to be able to access your S3 bucket in AWS. The first one we'll do is create a permission policy. So we'll click here and copy everything that's in this pop-up, and it cop gets copied to the clipboard. Now we need to go over to the IAM Management Console. Specifically, we'll look at policies on the left and create a new permission policy. We'll create a policy with JSON because we already have it in JSON format. If we paste back in, what we just copied from the stream window. One change we have to make is to add the bucket name. So we'll add that bucket name that we just created over here. We know we created a bucket called a data lake bucket 2023 of 414. So we'll copy that string from this web page and then we'll paste it right back here. In fact, we'll paste it four times into the permission policy. Then we'll hit next on the bottom and hit next on the bottom again and we'll give it a name. We'll choose that name to be consistent, Data Lake Permission 2023-0414. Great. We don't need to do anything else here. We'll hit Create Policy, and now we should have a permission policy. Next, we'll need to create a role. And so we'll click on Roles on the left. We'll click on Create Role in the upper right, and then click Custom Trust Policy. If we go back into Stream, we'll see that there is also a template for the Trust Policy. So we'll go and copy that as well. And then, if we go back into the IAM editor, we'll be able to simply select all and then paste in the policy we just grabbed. This is almost exactly what we need. Notice that there are two stanzas in here. One allows us to search, and one allows us to actually write into the bucket. Now, the only other thing we need to do, if we care to, is we can use the external ID field, and the external ID field will allow us to specifically tag those connections with a particular string. We can look at the AWS documentation to find that prototype. We'll copy it from here, and that gives us a condition that we can add to the policy. 
So if we go here, back into the IAM console, we can add that condition to each one of these clauses. And we'll add a comma, hit paste over here. We'll add a comma and hit paste here as well. Then the only thing we need to do is to actually add the string in here. We'll use Cribble Data Lake. Hit copy, select that, then paste it again. Just to make sure we don't lose it, let's go back to this screen and paste it there as well in the stream destination that we were working on. Back into the IAM policy, we'll hit next. It's going to ask for a permission policy. And if you recall, we already created a permission policy called Data Lake. I should be able to filter on that. And there it is. So we'll use this one right here, selecting it, and hit next. And we'll give this role that we're creating a name. We'll call it Data Lake Role 2023-0414. And that should be all we need to do. We've got a permission policy. We don't need any tags, and we'll create the role. So now we should actually have the role called Data Lake Role 2023-0414. And that should be it on the IAM console. The last step is to take the ARN, once we, we click on the role we created, and it created that ARN for us. So we want to take that, click on this to copy the ARN. And this is the most important part in setting, getting that ARN back into Cribble Stream. So if we click back on the Cribble Stream window and hit paste, we're pasting the ARN that we just created in Amazon back into the Cribble Stream window. So now Cribble Stream has bi-directional permissions into the bucket that we created. We'll hit save and that should be it with configuration. Now if we look at the bucket that we created, that bucket is right here, Data Lake bucket. And we should see that there's nothing in that bucket, which makes sense because it is brand new. We just created it. So now we'll go back here into stream. We'll tell it to commit and deploy. And we can type in a quick message like data lake configuration created. I'll click on commit and deploy. That's going to make it active in the leader node. And it's also going to push it down to our worker nodes in the particular group. That'll take in a minute or two to deploy. So we'll wait until the exclamation mark in the triangle becomes a green checkbox. Great, now we see that checkbox. The exclamation mark has become a green checkbox, and that should mean that those sources are now live. So what we can do is go into this destination. I can go to test, and we should be able to ask our two cloud worker nodes to execute a test, which sends data to the bucket, the one we're pointing to. We'll hit select one, run test, select the other one, and click on run test again. And we see it indicates success. Now, of course, we want to verify that that data actually was sent to S3. The, the test actually worked and all of our permissions are correct. If we close that window, we should be able to go over here to the data lake bucket back in the Amazon S3 console and refresh it. It may take a minute or two, but once it does, we should see now objects that exist inside of the bucket. There they are. And we see that this folder was created, which has some alphabetical characters, and then the date the year to be precise. If we click into this, we'll see some more characters than the month. Clicking again, more characters than the day. Clicking one more time, more characters than the hour. So this is creating data in the bucket with a year, month, day, and hour prefix in UTC time. Then we have that data that's actually being populated into the bucket. Obviously not a lot of data, but the data that was sent from those test destinations that we created called Data Lake 2023-0414 in stream. Now we should be all set up to route data to the destination, which will send data from stream and automatically write into S3 in a way that will eventually make it compatible with Cribble Search in a very efficient way. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll see how to set up Cribble Search to access the S3 bucket that we just created, and then ask questions of any data sent to the stream data lake Amazon S3 destination. Thank you and happy searching.